Hey guys, so welcome back to another episode on the Falcon YouTube channel. So it is a pleasure in this episode to be speaking to Mr. Steve Goldstein. So really appreciate you coming uh, for the day and all the value that you brought. And I thought it would be great to just have more of a, an insight into the psychology of trading. So just a bit of an introduction to Stephen. So Stephen has been in the industry for years, more towards the, the private side of things, so institutional funds, banks, etc. And he's now a performance coach for helping people with things like trading psychology. And we're going to be going over into those habits and behavioural traits of successful people. So again, appreciate Stephen jumping on this interview. How have you found the day so far? That was fantastic. Great to be here and uh, sort of great, you know, the atmosphere out there, the enthusiasm yeah, amongst the traders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think a good place to start would be because people are always wondering, you know, what are the behavioural traits of, of success, the successful traits that you see personally? Right, okay. So, um, you know, I, I think I explained in my talk, um, growth mindset, yes, um, although that probably needs a little bit more explanation, but it's, uh, it, it, it's having a mindset and an attitude and a set of beliefs where you believe you can always extend your potential, always grow, you can put effort in, you learn from your mistakes. Um, now, I mean that as opposed to what we call a fixed mindset, which is what most people are when they trade. And really, when they say they learn from their mistakes, quite often they don't actually learn from their mistakes, but they like to think they do. Um, growth mindset to people really do learn from their mistakes. You know, they're always exploring how they can become better, what they could have done differently, and, and they're better able to seize opportunity. Um, and that, that sort of flows over into the other parts of the game. They're, they're then better able to remove their ego from their trading. They're better able to hang, handle their emotions. Their emotions become less disturbing and less distracting. They, you know, and again, as long as their other beliefs are appropriate as well. So, you know, having a mindset for risk, thinking in terms of probability, rather than thinking they know the answer, and, and constantly recalibrating that probability. And then, of course, managing themselves as well. Self-management is really important. And uh, I don't think enough people do that. No, I don't think they do. And what you just touched on there, which I think is really interesting with the ego, the, having that probabilistic mind that you were talking about. Yeah. And you're talking, I think that's so important. You know, thinking in probabilities. Far too many people, they, they ask me all the time, uh, was I right or was I wrong? I was like, neither. <laughs> it's not about right or wrong. We're no. in a game of probabilities. And you yeah, have absolutely. to really be able to accept that, let's say there's a particular setup that you take, a particular, particular trade. You have to accept that it meets all of the criteria. It's at the highest probability in your mind of a trade, yeah. and it doesn't play out. Yeah. And then they ask the question, why? So when they ask the question, why, to me, I said, the question of why it didn't work out isn't the issue. The yeah. question is that you're asking why is the actual issue, because you're not thinking in the probabilistic mm -hmm. mindset. P people don't really consider the, the, the kind of near-roundedness mm -hmm. of the market. And I say to people, you know what, if you call ahead on, on a coin toss, you're not going to beat yourself up if a tail comes up. But that's what people do, something very similar in this market. Mm -hmm. you know, and you know, there's no point asking why a tail came up sometimes. It's just the way the, the coin fell. It is, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a term that almost seems a little bit loose. Yeah. But successful traders, you understand it. It is what it is. Yeah, that was a trade. It didn't work. The setup was good. That's why you took it. Mm -hmm. Move on to the next trade. And if the setup comes again, take the trade. As long as the setup has a positive expectancy, take the trade. Yeah, you just have to really, really get that into your mind and the people that struggle to get that in their mind, they're often yeah. the ones that overthink everything and they go back to the same thing. They think that, well, if I know more about the market, then I'll be more successful. When no. really, that's, that's not the case and, no. we, and, and we know that. And, I, and I've, I've seen the more neutral traders, the people that don't really care, if you like, what's happening in the market, they almost have a bit of like a, a don't care attitude. It's like, well, I don't know, that could happen. Because they're thinking probabilities and possibilities. Yeah. This was actually said to me once by, um, by a broker I was coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he coached some of the, the top traders in the market. Yeah. You know, these, these were Brun traders and T-note oh, yeah. traders yeah. at some of the biggest hedge funds. Mm -hmm. So he was, a, you know, he was an experienced broker, great clients. And uh, I, I got him to go out and ask, ask those clients you know, what they valued about him in his work. Because it was, it was helpful for him to know that. Mm -hmm. And they really valued that, you know, he brought them new insights always. He was always questioning them in the markets. And he said to me that, you know, collectively, when he summarised what they were saying, they were really saying that, yes, we're huge traders, we have big portfolios behind us, but actually we don't know more than anyone else. 
And that, I think, is the mindset of great traders. They will tell you they don't know more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's that not knowing attitude and accepting that you don't know, and that's okay. Yeah, and I remember you touching on that, and I think that's a really, really important part because uh, what, I, what I find with traders when they get confused on that point is that they, they try and combine everything. Yeah. They've got a technical picture, now they want to combine the macro picture. Yeah. They want to know what's going in or with this, if it's going to be a dollar ball run. And sometimes I just sit there and say, it doesn't matter. It is what it is, the market's going to tell you that, regardless if you are a more of a technical trader that is, and you're yeah. following that, well, I'll let the market decide. I don't need to decide. That's something that's it's out of my control. Yeah. All I will look at, for of course, I look at patterns a lot in a slightly unique way, but I will see that, well, this is the likelihood of this pattern playing out. If it doesn't, this is the variable, the variable yeah. change of it, and this is how I'm going to deal with it if it happens. And if yeah. it happens, it doesn't. And if it doesn't happen, it's not a comment on you. Exactly, they take it personally, yeah. which, which I just think it is what it is. It's like the DHY at the moment. People are all expecting that dollar ball run. Right? Yeah. They think it has to break, it's going to break out the 100 level. If it does, it does, I'm not bothered. Yeah. Structurally, I believe it's coming back down to around 90, maybe even lower. Yeah. If that happens, it happens. I, that's the structure that I've seen play out a lot of period of time, but I'm also ready for that 10% chance. And I think people don't realize is that if there's a 90% probability of a pattern playing out, right, yeah. you accept that but they accept that 100% and not 90. Yeah. But the 10% chance that let's say it doesn't play out, they only accept that 10%, which they have to have 100% acceptance that that 10% can play out. That's and never, no, you can never be that, exactly. that certain. Yeah, so it's a, it's a hard thing to get across to traders to think like that, but the more probabilistic they can think of, they, they remove that want to want to know yeah but what about this and what about that that was a, one of the things you know i spoke about in, in the talk was about this complicated system mindset and yes. this complex yeah. system mindset now when you have a complex complicated system market mindset you're always looking for that mm -hmm. and one of the problems is that our 20 odd years of education has geared us for that mm -hmm. it's prepared us for a world mm -hmm. where you think in terms of finding the answers mm -hmm. you know and that, that's why and I, I talked about this so many really good poker players make it in trading because poker already teaches you that you can't think like that. Randomness. You know, that you might have the best hand in the world, but it could still lose, or not, not the best hand, but one of the best hands, course, yeah. and you can still be beaten. Mm. And, and I think that's why so many good poker players make it. And we've also noticed that a lot of people that had, you know, there's, there's an extraordinary number of people that had, say, early love traumas, okay. you know, that do really well. Because they very realise, their life experience has told them the world is not going to give them what they want. You know, the world won't give them, that there is no answer. And somehow that creates a mindset as well, where you're more accustomed to uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And you can live with it better because you've experienced it. That's interesting, because then you just learn, you learn to manage it, right? Yeah. Rather than control, because the people tend to get really upset because they want to control everything. Yes. But you can learn to just manage your emotions. Yeah. I find that a much more sustainable way, anyway, a more practical way that you can follow. It's, it's, it's almost not managing your emotions, but it, it's almost just allowing things to happen. And, and you know, if, if something really bad happens, you get really upset. Of course. But if something really bad happens and you can say in a way, well, you know what, these things happen. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't become as emotional about mm -hmm. it. So it's kind of having a, a mindset that kind of says, you know, bad things happen and it doesn't become as painful and you can move on quicker. And it's, it's interesting because you talked about that, see, see part of it with that DXY example is we don't know what will happen. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you've given it probabilities means you're probably prepared for it. Whichever way it goes, you'll be able to react quicker both ways. Of course, yeah. It's not just one way. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you're open to everything. Mm -hmm. And I think having that open mindset in the markets is the most important thing. Yeah. Because the market's evolving, it's changing, yeah. things happen, and I personally wanted to find a way yeah. that I could encourage me to think in probabilities as much as possible. Yeah. Because what I started doing is I was learning all these different strategies, and I would be taking the, the trade in the zone from Mark Douglas, that's almost gospel, was right, the probabilities that's really joined into my mind from 2008. But everything, like the way I was trading wasn't congruent with that. Yeah. So it made me not think in probability. So it was really that friction. I was thinking that something doesn't fit right. I need to find a way that encourages me to always think in probability so I can accept and just what will happen will happen. As yeah. long as I've got an edge and I'm managing my risk, I'm okay with that. 
Yeah. And then I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't take a personal offence if the market takes me out for a loss. It is what it is. Yeah. And I just move on. But I mean, that, 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 that is hard to learn, but that is what you have to learn. <laughs> you know? It's necessary, yeah. 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 So would you say just to, um, uh, to, to round it up, if you were to give a, a bit of advice to, I don't know, more from the retail side of things or just traders as a whole, what would you say is a, a, good thing them, a good thing for them to focus on? Would it be things like processes, more important than focusing on money and things like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there is so many bits of advice and I'm, I'm never quite sure, but, you know, if I was to go back to... I, Someone's to ask me, what do I wish I'd have knew or learnt at the start of my trading career that I know now? You know, it, it's, it's, I would say it's how to be able to cope with uncertainty well. It's how not to take things personally. You know, how not to define myself by failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's removing the ego from trading. Mm -hmm. um, think of everything in terms of probability. I never thought that in the early days of my career. I mean, I survived, I got through it, but I think I would have been stronger, I would have thrived more, mm -hmm. you know, good things would have happened far quicker. Yes. You know, and uh, th th those lessons amongst many others, th those probably would have been key for me. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that I think everyone should ask those questions at some point, and they would all have different answers, and those will be the things that they didn't cope well with early, that they need to still learn and adapt for. 100% and I think if, uh, especially young traders, that's something that's really important for you guys and girls watching is to, to ask those good questions. If you yeah. can start asking those, those questions early on, you're going to save yourself a lot of time yeah. and a lot of headache and thinking that the market's against you and all these kind of things. Puts you more neutral, makes you feel uh, more comfortable yeah. and accept the outcome. So Work on self. That is so important. Yeah, like you said, the inner game and the out game. Yeah. I found that so interesting. Yeah. So, uh, no, I absolutely love that. Well, appreciate you coming on, appreciate you coming here for the day and sure. uh, dropping those insights and those value. And guys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and we look forward to bringing you more. If you do, I would love for you to, to comment actually below your number one takeaways of what you found, anything that you might be struggling with that we can help you out and create more videos on. So again, thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.